Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new to my channel or just simply not yet subscribed, my name's Brittany and definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button. Sorry about the noise in the background. That is a fan because we don't have AC and it's really hot. It was 92 degrees today plus humidity. So the like hottest day that it's been so far this year and that is butter if you guys don't know him yet first and foremost though i if, if you guys have a pokemon go this is not sponsored but i recently got back into pokemon go it used to be something that i played a lot but i kind of stopped playing it and I got back into it because I got Sebastian into Pokemon, which made me want to get back into Pokemon because, you know, nostalgia. So I'm going to drop my um, tag name and yeah, go ahead and add me and let's dive in. So today we're going to be talking about the Nevada Triangle. This actually isn't something that I heard of before until I started doing research for the Alaskan Triangle, then this came up. So, bounded by the cities of Fresno, Las Vegas, and Reno, also the high peaks of the Sierra Nevada mountain range lies Nevada's very own mystery. So, within this triangle lies Yosemite, Kings Canyon, and the infamous Area 51. So Area 51 has a lot of mystery just in itself. So the fact that there is another thing that has Area 51 in it that has the shrouded in mystery. Around 2,000 aircraft have gone missing in the Nevada Triangle over the past 60 years. That's around three going missing every month, which three, yeah, sounds like a low number, but when you're talking about missing aircrafts every month, that's actually pretty high. So what makes it eerier is that most of these aircrafts are flown by experts. They're not just your everyday, not that, not that you can't be an expert if you're a pilot, just like an everyday average in the mill pilot but like these people they like they had so many different like honors and awards and did these incredible things like one of the people that we talked about was a man who flew a weather balloon around the world so these were not your average of the mill pilots and they were the ones to go missing one of the most famous accounts to go missing in the nevada triangle was that of a world record setting aviator sailor and adventurer named steve fawcett so now i just said he went around the world in a weather balloon yeah that was this guy on september 3rd 2007 he took off in a single engine blanca super decathlon over nevada's great basin desert and he never returned after there were no leads with a massive search that went on for a month search was called off and on february 15th 2008 he was actually pronounced dead because there was no record of him, no sightings of him. Like they, they found nothing. In late September, 2008, a hiker found pieces of identification cards and a wad of cash at Ritter Ridge. And that's an area of the Sierra Nevada mountains that lies just outside the Mammoth Lakes. This area is exactly 65 miles from the Flying M Ranch, which is where Fawcett had originally taken off. The identification cards were confirmed to be Stephen Fawcett. I 
Madeira County Sheriff's Office. The other items that were found included a thousand dollars in cash and Fawcett Soaring Society of America ID, which I don't know why you just have a grand in cash on you, but I guess cards weren't really a thing back then or as much as common of a thing. I guess cards weren't as pop, like debit cards and stuff weren't as commonly used back then, which is, it's crazy to think about how like long ago that actually was, but yeah, 2008, we're in 2022. That's, that's a little bit, but still, that's a lot of money just to have like in your pocket. The day after these items were found, another search effort began to find Fawcett and the missing plane. After an aerial search of the northern region of Mammoth Mountains, crews were actually able to locate the crash site along the ridge. Aviators were immediately able to identify this as Hilton's stunt plane and ground searchers began to find more remains of the plane. And over a month later, there were actually two bones that were discovered about half a mile away from the crash site and they were identified as Steve Fawcett's. Now one of the earliest planes to disappear in the Nevada Triangle dates back 70 years when a B-24 bomber crashed in the Sierra Nevada in 1973. The bomber took off on December 5th and was piloted and was piloted by second lieutenant Willis Turby and co-piloted by second lieutenant Robert M. Hester with four other crew members including second lieutenant William Thomas Cronin who served as the navigator, second lieutenant Ellis H. Fish who was a bombardier, sergeant Robert Bercy as engineer and Sergeant Howard A. Wadtick, Wadtick as radio operator. This flight was just your routine flight. It was just a routine mission that they took off in Fresno, California's Hammerfield, destined to Bakersfield, California, to Tuscan, and then back extensive search mission began the next day when nine b-24 bombers were sent out to find the missing plane but then it disappeared too on the morning of december 6 1943 squadron commander captain william darden took flight along with eight other b-24s captain darden his airplane and the remaining crew would not be seen again until 1955. So they left 1943 and they weren't seen again or weren't found until 1955 when Huntington Lake Reservoir was drained to repair the dam. Investigation into the second bomber's loss stated that Darden had experienced high wind turbulence and began to lose hydraulic pressure. When the captain saw what looked like a snow covered clearing, he told his crew to bail out, but only two jumped. The station stated that the pilot must have mistaken the frozen lake for a clearing. The two soldiers who did parachute from the plane and survived made statements that the lake wasn't frozen and when the plane was finally found it was resting 190 feet below the water with its crew members still at its stations or at their stations which would just be a horrible sight and hester who was the co-pilot's father Robert Hester from the first missing plane began his own private search. 
son, and that would last 14 years. He knew that, you know, he wasn't going, like, with missing people cases, they don't always get the resources they deserve, whether it's because, there, there's so many different reasons. Sometimes it's like bad work being done, and sometimes it's just they lack the resources. He, you know, he wanted to know what happened to his son. He wanted to find his son, so he decided that he was going to search himself. And he did that till the day he died. Unfortunately, he died without an answer. However, a year after he passed, son would be found in July of 1960 by United States Geological Survey researchers who were working in a remote section of the High Sierra west of Leconte Canyon in Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park. There they found the airplane wreckage in and near an unnamed lake. Later, Army investigators revealed the wreckage to be that of the first missing bomber, piloted by Lieutenant Willis Turvey and co-piloted co by 2nd Lieutenant Robert M. Hester, and they named the lake Hester Lake. So that is what it's known to to this day, which is actually quite incredible. Another military plane went missing on May 9th, 1957, when Air Force Lieutenant David Steves was piloting a T-33 training jet. He took off from Hamilton Air Force Base near San Francisco. The plane disappeared on its way to Arizona, and after a thorough search with zero success, the Air Force declared the 23-year-old pilot officially dead. But 54 days later, he reappeared. He was gone and was in tattered and dirty clothing. He had made his way to a camp in Kings Canyon National Park's backcountry, east of Fresno, California. He described that when something in the plane had exploded, he briefly blacked out. However, he came to just in time to eject himself from the plane, which did also like that saved his life, but he did get very badly injured when he landed. He hurt his both of his ankles severely. He dragged his parachute with him in order to keep him warm and he crawled over 20 miles in freezing temperature at 12,000 feet in elevation for 15 days with no food and no shelter like this guy had such a strong will to live it's just incredible it's a it's incredible he survived so finally he had came across an abandoned national park service cabin where he found some cans of food and some fishing equipment. He then survives by fishing and killing a deer with his pistol. And after he regained some of his strength because he had finally been able to eat something, he tried to make it to civilization. During this time when he was trying to make it to civilization, he nearly drowned in Kings River before he stumbled across a pack train guide who took him by horse back to civilization. Now, no remains of his plane have ever been found, and it wasn't until 1977 that Boy Scouts found his jet canopy. The plane remains missing to this day. In 1941, Lieutenant Leonard C. Leiden parachuted to safety after his army fighter squadron got lost in the mountain. His P-40 fell within a mile of where it landed in a remote Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park. And to this day, his wreckage has also never been found. Now do keep in mind that these are national parks, so they're quite large. So it is possible that it's never been found because of the vast wilderness that 
encompasses these parks, like they're untouched. So that's definitely a possibility. But it is a little strange because it would be a large object. But, you know, land has it, or nature has its way of kind of like taking things back. So, you know, it could be kind of encompassed in nature. Another famous case was a missing aviator Charles named Charles Ogal. Ogal. He was a wealthy real estate developer who took off from Oakland, California in August 1964, but he vanished on his way to Las Vegas, Nevada. The Marine Corps pilot or trains pilot was never seen from or heard from again and his plane has never been found. On July 11, 1986, Major Ross Mulher flew in F-117 into a mountain near Bakersfield, California. The cause of his crash has never been revealed which it's crazy like literally flew it into a mountain and no one knows why so what is the reason behind all of these disappearances these crashes what is it now we're gonna dive into the theories so the first theory we have includes the infamous area 51 i think i've said this so many times on here but my dream growing up was to work at area 51 because i wanted to work with aliens Maybe one day, maybe one day I'll work with aliens. At this point, I would honestly just settle for seeing an alien and knowing it was one. That'd be pretty cool. So along the eastern edge of the Nevada Triangle sits the very top secret government facility that we all know as Area 51. According to the U.S. Air Force, this site has been used since 1955 to develop and test weapons and experimental aircraft. Remains from the famous Roswell crash are said to be held at the base, which has sparked decades of rumors and or that the real purpose of the base was to study and communicate with extraterrestrials. Now, security around this base is insane. Like, it is very, very tightly secured. If you even step close to the perimeter, you will be met with guards pointing guns at you. Like, they don't joke. Some speculate that the government has been just taking down anything that gets too close that's the cause for so many planes that have disappeared or crashed but there is an odd thing though now the disappearances started around the same time that this base opened so that kind of leaves you to wonder does it have anything to do with the disappearances next we have portals According to Albert Einstein, space and time are woven together, forming a smooth four-dimensional fabric known as space-time. Now, a recent study by NASA actually proved that Einstein wasn't only correct, but also that the space-time vortex that surrounds the Earth is distorted due to the spinning motion of the planet. Now, some fringe theorists have suggested that because of this, a rift has occurred in the fabric. And this has caused small portals to open up in specific areas around the world, such as the Bermuda Triangle and the Nevada Triangle. However, right now there is no proof revealed to the public of this rift and if there are portals we're not really sure where they lead to however it is quite interesting that albert einstein was right he's very smart 
So not that far fetched of a theory. And next we have simple pilot error between the pop up storms and the very terrain. There can often be heavy turbulence and statistically pilot error is the leading cause of crashes. However, just keep in mind that a lot of pilots have gone missing in this triangle and they have been experts. So they're not your just everyday pilot or beginning beginner pilot or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. Not saying that it couldn't be some of these, but I don't think it's all of them. And lastly, we have what are called mountain waves. Now these are fast moving winds that are off of the nearby Pacific Ocean that frequently push through the steep mountainside. Now a pilot that encounters this phenomenon may go from a straight and level flight to essentially riding an invisible roller coaster. Downdrifts produced by the mountain waves are frequently strong and very forceful. So they can be extremely dangerous. Hundreds of feet can be lost very quickly. The mountain waves and winds are strong enough to overpower the ability of a light plane to keep from getting thrown into the train below. So what do you guys think it is? I I think there's a couple different things that are, I mean, it honestly, honestly could be all of them that's attributing to this. Because I'm sure some are pilot error, that some are just getting too close to the base. I am sure that some are mountain waves. And it wouldn't surprise me if some are portals. I mean, I don't think it's just one thing here. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments down below. Definitely make sure to like this video and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, love you guys. Bye.